just love it. So hopefully it's worth the wait. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, we were supposed to do <laughs> our own reaction video to this one. Uh, I, I messed it up. I apologize. I, uh, I messed it up too. So. <laughs> but that you can watch my reactions to everything at the Nintendo press conference over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash jet and third person. But Jason, what did you think about Nintendo's showing this year? Gotcha. I actually did watch this, not live, but I got up a little bit early and watched. Um, okay. Not bad. So like thinking, <laughs> I'm going to be nice. Uh, just thinking of what I said earlier, where you get your hype up and you feel let down, like it's easy to do that with Nintendos. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of E3s follow a sort of pattern where, you know, one publisher, let's say Nintendo, uh, will have like one year where they announce a whole bunch of stuff that's coming soon or coming later. And then the next year they don't announce as much stuff because all the stuff is coming soon. So I feel like that was this year for Nintendo. Um, and I think even like Reggie Fisame or someone even said that was the purpose. Like we're showing you stuff that's going to be here in the next like six months. And then there will be another direct later on for things that are coming later. Um, so that being said, I think um, the Super Smash Direct or Nintendo Direct. Um, you might as well <laughs> call it the Smash Direct. Yeah. <laughs> I think it uh, I mean, it obviously had a focus. So we'll get to Smash in a, in a bit. But I think um, there was some cool stuff, like still some cool things that are coming. Um, the new Fire Emblem game is, looks cool. Uh, Newish kind of setting. So I'm, I'm down for that. Um, that ex machina game whatever at the very beginning i thought for sure it was going to be uh, sin and punishment but it was not um but that that could be cool like I'm, I'm all for new stuff um and i think the only game i actually called was mario party and that that looks pretty sweet like the ability to put together those two switches that and blew my mind link them up. yeah that's cool and i'm sure it's not going to be an amazing revolutionary like oh it's going to change gameplay but it's kind of neat that you can do that and change up stuff like that that sounds cool um yeah, and I, I don't know. Um, any thoughts before we move on to Smash, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I, a bunch of stuff. I thought that yeah. mech game, Damon X Machina, looked really cool. Yeah. Love yeah. to see more of that. Uh, Xenoblade is getting a sequel. I haven't played that first one or any of the Xeno series games, but yeah. I was surprised at how well that first game sold on the Switch, and so glad to see that one is getting a sequel. Yeah. Um, they showed some more Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu, and right, they right. put in an exclusive for the Pokeball Plus. If you want to get a Mew, you're going to have Mew, to buy this yeah. controller. Uh, That's true. I just saw now it's like, uh, I think it's 40 bucks if you get the, because the game is like 60, but the bundle is 100. <laughs> so it's like, oh, Jesus. Oh, man, that $40 DLC for one Pokemon. <laughs> Yep, yep. I mean, that's not I'm still debating if I want it. I'm going to say no, but we'll see how it goes. That's not, I know people use that sort of because it's not entirely fair. Like I got mad when people were mad at um, the Metroid super hard mode being tied to an amiibo and calling it $30 DLC or whatever. That's not entirely yeah. true because you are getting a physical figure out of it that happens to have some other stuff. Yeah. So if the DLC itself was 30 bucks, that'd be ridiculous. But technically you're getting a figure on top of it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's true. So not entirely uh, the same thing. Still kind of scummy, though. Yeah, it could be, I guess. Um, I was also disappointed by the lack of Amiibo during the conference. But, I mean, there was some, so we'll see. I like my toys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with uh, the Fire Emblem game, I really yeah. liked that they added sort of support troops to each character. Because mm -hmm. when you think about it, those Fire Emblem, Emblem games are supposed <clears throat> to represent big wars between multiple armies and really it's like 10 dudes versus 12 dudes yeah but now true. having yeah. those extra support characters i think will go a long way to making those fights look more interesting and making yeah. sure that you don't turn those animations off which i usually just do because yeah yeah they're, they're i do usually not worth too. watching after once or twice yeah and they did this kind of interesting thing where they were showing the gameplay and it almost looked like your avatar was exploring like in an like in a world as opposed to the game map so i wonder if that's going to be something they do too like maybe even just like oh here's the barracks and you can run around that way because they kind of explored that in fates mm -hmm. so maybe it's going to be a full full 3d for the switch that, would that could be, cool. be could be fun yeah uh they did announce fortnite out now that should mm -hmm. have been a much bigger news story had it not been leaked weeks ago yeah because that's, that's a huge get for nintendo huge win yeah big win I mean, 2 million people already. Yeah, so. <laughs> massive. By this rate, it should be at 4 million if it keeps going, yeah. Um, Dragon Ball Fighters is coming. That was really weird. They just kind of slipped that into a montage. Yeah, 
I saw that sizzle reel and I'm like, whoa, Dragon Ball Fighters, that's kind of a big one. And it but looks yeah, awesome it like... on the Switch. I saw some E3 yeah. coverage of people like off screen footage and it looks the same as the PS4 version. Nice, bad. Can't argue with that. So... I see the next game on there, uh, oh, Overcooked 2. I should have mentioned that. That's going to be awesome. I know it's coming out for a PS4 and everything like that, but it, have you played the first one? Yes, I played it on the Switch, and that was gotcha. Uh, that that felt like the right platform for it. Gotcha. Oh, good to know. Uh, we only played it on PS4 uh, mainly because the yeah, Switch wasn't out at the time, where we didn't have it on at the time. Uh, but man, that game was really fun, and we we played it so much. I'm kind of sick of it now because <laughs> my friends don't want to play it. I'm like, oh god, I don't want to play it again. But like that being said, like I, I'm totally down for a sequel, like more levels, more stuff. Um, it just sounds like a lot of fun, and uh, it's good to know that it's it's good on the Switch. But I feel like I'll probably still lean towards PS4 just because that's what my friends actually have. And then now it finally has online play, which is a huge, huge plus. So that's gonna be it's gonna be freaking awesome. I think that game is going to be a nightmare in online play. Unless oh yeah, for sure. Oh, it's gonna be awful. It's I'm... already a, it's already a nightmare. So, yeah. <laughs> this is true. My one wish for Overcooked Two is I hope they make the difficulty curve a little smoother. I, I think it's too yeah. hard. It was tough. And I mean, if you read anything about the, the new one, there's going to be like dynamic maps more so. And then like the menus will change in some levels, like mid mid match. Uh, like you can throw stuff to one another. Um, I'm assuming they'll probably put that mechanic in some other crazy way. So yeah, it's probably going to be, if anything, even more complicated. Oh man. Like I, I enjoy the freneticness of it, but I don't mm. like not being able to play more than half of the game because me and my friends suck yeah exactly you're never gonna get three stars yeah <laughs> yeah uh before we move on to smash and it's not on the outline um i saw it as a spoiler too from like two weeks ago but uh they announced killer queen black was coming to the switch okay um have you ever played the arcade game or no um no i've never um, seen that gotcha no it's it's fine uh I think like the de- the developers somewhere here in California, but it's it's at some arcades every now and then. But it's always at the arcade convention that we go to in July, and um, that is a fun game. I think it's not like going to be a huge huge system seller, but essentially, if you haven't heard of it, um, it's like a four v four competitive game okay. with um, the teams going against one another, like all you know real time. But it's eight bit in style. So if you remember the trailer, it's yeah, you know, kind of like an old NES SNES game. Mm-hmm. But you have three objectives that you want to do or one of three to win um so you can take on different roles and you can switch whenever you want uh so the the three objectives are to win through war and so you'll um you'll become like kind of like a character from joust where you like fly around and have like a sword to poke people all right and then if you if you kill more people than like the enemies can kill you like you know kind of a give and take uh you can win or you can do a, a um what's it called like an economical win where instead of being a fighter you kind of become this like thieving bear sort of character who doesn't fight but you can leave your spawn area to go around the map and collect little berries to bring back to your spawn area and then once you collect enough if you get them first you know you win that way or you can win through i don't know what the last one's called but we just always called it the snail because at the bottom of the map (laughs) there's there's no there's literally a snail okay and then you can you can jump on it and then the snail moves to one direction, like towards your base or some someone's base. And then if you get it there, like you win, but the snail goes really slow. And then when you're on the snail, you're vulnerable. So you could just get killed really quickly. Um, and then if, you know, the enemy team gets on the snail, it goes the other direction. So it's like a tug of war sort of mm. battle. And then wh- whichever team achieves one of those first wins. And um, it's it's really cool. And I think it's fun because you can get eight players on around this huge machine. And it's a, it's a cool like spectator sort of moment. Um, so I think on the switch, it's a perfect, it would be perfect if you could play all eight. Like if you could play all eight on one screen, like that's going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. But even if it's just like four on one screen and four on, you know, online or something like that, that'd be really, really cool. So that's a, that's a neat, a neat experience, which I feel like could also probably be on PS4. So we'll, we'll see, but I think that's really cool. And I'm excited to see that one come out. It's a neat, a neat progress for that team that made that game, but I feel like it's going to be a fun multiplayer game to, to play. All right. I've actually used my switch in land mode before just it was a summer party last year and mm-hmm. we were at my parents place and we brought down two we brought up two big big screen tvs two switches and we did the head-to-head arms setup oh, uh, nice. so that was so much fun and That's so cool. yes killer queen black sounds like the perfect game for that yeah, yeah, def- oh, definitely. If you can, up. even if you can just get two switches like i feel like that's probably the way they're gonna do it yeah that would be really really cool 
All right, let's talk about Smash. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so let's not talk about Smash for half an hour, please. Yeah, um, uh, I won't. I thought that, I guess the big problem with their their output this year was that they spent way too much time on Smash, to the detriment of everything else they presented. Yeah, I, I watched your stream that you were doing, and uh, I think you said at some point, like, oh, we're running out of time. Like, are we going to talk about anything else? And that's... <laughs> pretty much what i went through too in my mind like it was great to hear all that stuff but i was just like man like uh, i just feel like there's so much stuff missing that i wanted to hear about i like when I, I was okay when they were doing the character reveals and they're like surprise everybody's in great mm -hmm. um then they could have said hey we got one more character it's ridley cool did we need mm -hmm. to go over balance changes for every single character of the game yeah no. yeah yeah, exactly. But see, I feel like, though, you and I don't play Smash enough to care about that stuff. Like, I, I mean, I care about all those things, but, like, that's for the hardcore players. The ones, like, the competitive players would want to know about, you know, all the role canceling being kind of diminished. Um, so, yeah, I think that they could have omitted that, but it's maybe just wasn't for us. But regardless, I think it just took a long time. Yeah, I understand. And just Starlight says, I get why they put Smash at the end, though. It's their big game, and they wanted it to end strong. Totally agree, agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with that. Um, and I totally agree there's a segment of the player base that really wants to know the balance changes and the fact that Ike is voiced two slightly different ways <laughs> based on yeah. which costume you're using. Marth is in English. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the E3 presentation is a broader range presentation, and I, all of that sort of super meticulous stuff would work much better in its own independent smash direct like yeah. the what well, they, and, and they did arms. they did the treehouse like literally right after and the first thing they did was smash which is smart you know you might as well follow it up but some of that stuff could have been detailed there and then even if they didn't show anything else they could have just taken it out of the direct and just saved 10 minutes and yeah. then just done it later but yeah you know. yeah i feel like had they gone in with the exact same set of games and just made the smash part a lot shorter i think people mm. would be more a bit more optimistic not like without even changing the amount of games there i think it's just smash brought yeah. everything unintentionally brought everything down despite the fact that smash looks awesome and yeah yeah a lot of people were concerned like oh i hope my character gets in maybe ice climbers gets gets to come back please shulk why is were you gonna come back because street fighter but it's all there it's all there. <laughs> everything yeah. you want is there um, and that, that's awesome for that particular player base. Uh, we just didn't need to dwell on it as long as we did. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of agree. And I mean, that being said, like, I'm sure you and I were both and probably Starlight too. We were all going to, we were all going to buy that game. So like, it's not like we're not going to get it. And so it was cool to hear all this cool stuff coming to it. But yeah. I just felt like, and, and like, ah, it's tough to be mad. Cause like nothing was omitted. I just feel like I was hoping for some other big Metroid prime four, like, big news something that would really entice me for the 2020 year for the switch and i don't think we really really heard that i think there's still a lot of loose ends they left out there yeah to your point mm -hmm. um hold on what was that thing you just said i totally blanked on it just now oh like the 2020 and no uh, there was a game you just mentioned metroid prime 4 yes metroid prime 4 didn't talk about that at all uh mm -hmm. yoshi which they announced last year didn't talk about that no at show all. yep uh, uh there was no um, no Zelda news, like no other Mario news, no like Zelda news, those no big Mario franchises. News. They literally never mentioned the 3DS. There's no 3DS so, like, games. Yeah, it's just like, oh, geez. And like, are those they're all things that I like, just something. Like, I know the 3DS is dying, like, that's fine. But like, you know, what if there was one more killer game? And there is, they announced Wario last time. Like, where was WarioWare? You didn't even mention it. So, uh, I don't know. Those things that you just kind of want that are, they just let you down. Yeah. That said, I think there are some people who are jumping the gun a little too quick, saying <clears throat> Nintendo's... I mean, there's always people saying Nintendo's doomed. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no way. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. like, I think people are forgetting that Nintendo does direct throughout the year. There's yeah. always surprise releases. I think the indie stuff is going to has been, like, a really good stream of solid games for them, where they have great stuff to play almost every week. That's going to keep going. The first party output is a little disappointing in the mm -hmm. terms of like we got Kirby a couple months ago. If I didn't buy Kirby, so I haven't played a first party Nintendo yeah. game in like half a year. 
I'm going to pick up tennis, but if you didn't pick up tennis either, like you're waiting till Mario or Pokemon. Or not Mario, Smash Bros. Yeah. or Pokemon. Um, Starlight says, I feel at this point their focus is 100% Switch. I feel yeah. like it probably should be, but they've said yeah. that it's the 3DS is still going to be a thing mm -hmm. as long as people keep buying it and as long as the Switch is not a system that is a one-per-person thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that they'll... Um, I think the 3DS is on its last legs, but I don't think it's, like, dying. I think it's just, like, going to retire, if you will, as opposed <laughs> to just being dead. Yes. So I think that, yeah, they'll they'll have that for a while and probably support it with some stuff here and there, but not a lot. No. Um, yeah, and I think that... Uh, thinking back about first party Nintendo content again, it's tough to be mad. Cause like, I mean, last year we got two absolutely amazing game games from Nintendo. And then this year we still have really good games coming up. So it's just like, I don't know. It beggars can't be choosers, I guess. And if you look at the Wii U and how quite simply it was atrocious, how there was not that many games for it. And at least for the switch, we don't have that problem. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's good. I mean, overall like this, it's hard to complain for stuff. You know, it's just a wish list that wasn't fulfilled, but there's always next year. And like you said, they're going to do a direct at some other point. So it will, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Overall, I, I know there were some people saying that this was the worst Nintendo E3 presentation of all time, and which I say mm. is absolutely false. Are we Probably forgetting not. the Wii music stuff that I just yeah. showed at the beginning? The do beginning. I need to play <laughs> that clip Please again? Don't. Do we need Please to don't. run through Cammy Dunaway snowboarding with sean white on the weeb fit balance board <laughs> oh dear god let's this is nowhere close to that i will say yeah. of the three major third party manufacturer first party manufacturers nintendo was probably the weakest of the bunch but i still think it was mm -hmm. okay and part yeah. of that yeah smash went too long they uh, some of their big news got leaked too early which took a lot of the punch out of it i think mm -hmm. it was just okay yeah yeah i think um i guess my final thoughts on nintendos um i don't know I, I don't know if i'd rate them the lowest i feel like they were probably on par with sony but it's it's hard to see past those big things but i mean like we're getting a new smash with everyone in it and by god like ridley's gonna be in the game um like i'm still getting some new amiibos like they did show them in the treehouse like that's really cool yep uh, we didn't even talk about Splatoon 2, but that DLC drops, what, today? Um, and yeah. that's a huge DLC pack. Like, that's really, really great. Um, all those indie games that are coming out, I know I talked about Killer Queen. Like, those are great games. Overcooked, that's a really, really cool game. And you can play all these. Some of you could play literally right now, but by the next, like, six months, you could play all those things. And so, like, in terms of, like, Sony and Microsoft, like, you're going to have to wait a long time to get that content. But for Nintendo fans, we didn't even talk about Octopath Traveler. That's in like a month. Yeah. And like like all huge, huge wins. So it's it's tough to look at all those things and not – and like still discredit Nintendo. I think that they just didn't give as much fan service, but they gave the Switch like what it needed. All right. Mm -hmm. Wanted to highlight one more thing Starlight said here. I disagree. I absolutely hated Sony showing. It felt like they had a lot of technical issues and stuff. Plus having pundit type people talking for half an hour as part of their conference. Yes, that was, yeah. that was weird. <laughs> like, like, is this the show? Is this aside from the show? I really didn't understand it. Like one of the guys who works for Sony now, Ryan Clements, I know him from IGN. So like, wait, is this, mm -hmm. does he, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say I hate it. I still thought Sony, Sony's highs were better than Nintendo's highs. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, mm. But I thought their, like I said, their lineup I thought was a little too limited in scope. Mm. And their, yeah. the way they presented it was weird. Yeah, yeah. I think content-wise, they both, yeah, they were both on par. Nintendo, I mean, Nintendo's Nintendo. Like, we're going to play those games and enjoy them. And then Sony showed off what they wanted to show off. Here's our big story set pieces. Here's these crazy new games. Here's how good it's going to look. So they, they, each company did as expected. You know, nothing too surprising. Yeah. So, overall, E3, thumbs up, thumbs down? Uh, I think, uh, like, looking at it, I guess, just off the cuff, I feel like it's a thumbs in the middle or thumbs down, um, especially when I look at last year's and how hyped I was afterward. Um, but the reason I wouldn't want to do all thumbs down and just keep it somewhere in the middle is because, like we just said, this Nintendo stuff is coming really soon. Um I don't have an Xbox, so I can't really speak about what I want. But as a gamer, like I'm still excited for Sony's content. Um, 
I know Square Enix was kind of a dud, but like their games that are still coming, Octopath, uh, Kingdom Hearts, finally, like those are those are pretty big for us. And um, yeah, so like I think it's it's nice to know that a lot of the stuff is coming soon, as opposed to it's this is what we're working on in years to come. All right. And we got one more point here from Starlight. I just don't like gruesome games, so personally kept having to look away from the screen during Sony's. Yeah, Sony's was oh, yeah. really brutal. Yeah. With The Last of Us yeah. and Ghost of Tsushima of back of back, and people are getting their limbs cut and their throats slit. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, that is gruesome, gruesome stuff. Just stick with us, let's do it, and you'll explode the thing instead. Yeah. So on a complete tangent, or a side note, before we close this out, what is your relationship to Starlight? Oh, um... We used to work together. Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, she um, yeah worked with us, and then now she's a streamer. So follow her. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I should all kinds her of stuff. After this. Yeah, yeah. Splatoon and God, well, really, kind of retro games, like kind of everything. All right. Um, does she have any embarrassing stories about you that she could possibly share in the stream chat? Uh, I don't know. I hope not. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be a surprise. We'll see. Yeah. Actually, while we are here, there's one other thing we need to talk about. Uh, mm. We did a bingo card. Oh, man. That's... Oh, yeah. And these are the results. So the things that JJ got mm. right, Fortnite, available now. Uh, mm. No Mother 3. I felt like that no one was a three. gimme. <laughs> like, come on, man. Um, yeah. I technically got one new Smash Bros. character announced, like exactly one character. I was... It's not exactly what I meant, but I'm just going to give myself the point anyway. I was I was originally thinking one brand new character from one completely new franchise. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. To, but the way it's worded, I didn't have enough words on the bingo card. Anyway. Um, and then Fire Emblem delayed to 2019. I just felt like we hadn't seen or heard enough about that game leading up to this point that it was going to be a thing. So I was right yeah. on that. And then you called Mario Party for Switch. Woo, I got one. <laughs> I feel like I was I was so close with the the new Smash Amiibo because mm-hmm. like yeah that's what it is but my technical one was that we would get an entire new line of all new Smash Amiibos so a whole new set which I still really hope for but I, uh, I don't think that's happening man it's not happening I know <laughs> I, I was just I you know like I, I'm really surprised that there wasn't um, like I mean of course all the ones that I picked I, I assumed they would happen but I was really surprised there wasn't a new any of those new games in that bottom corner. Like new Star Fox, Animal Crossing, Wave Race, F Zero, Pikmin. I saw for sure like they're gonna drop one of those things, but none of them. So uh yeah. and no N sixty four classic. So sad. <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna happen later this year. Uh, do you think the yeah. Star Fox thing is real? The Star Fox racing game? I don't know. Um it seems out of place, um, like as a real thing, because again, Wave Race, F Zero, Hell Diddy Kong Racing, like those ones that you could bring back instead. But I don't know. I feel like Nintendo is sticking to its guns, and it, it has its racing series with Mario Kart, so it might not, might not do another one. But I still want one. Like, <laughs> let's do like a Wave Race F Zero crossover. Like, I would play the shit out of that. Oh, I would play the heck out of that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, we, yeah, we didn't get the bingo. We got a handful of these, right? Uh, maybe no. next year we'll. Oh wait, no, I'm probably still gonna be away for most of it. <laughs> but i was gonna say uh we would do like more comprehensive wrap-ups but i thought this yeah, was yeah. great yeah, yeah it's uh, good to chat about everything and you filling me in on stuff that i didn't know so yeah for sure uh let's close this out is there anything you want to plug before we get out of here